<clears throat> All right. So, uh... I... I, uh, figured out how to set up myself with a new profile without actually deleting everything else I had. I just created a new Steam account and then I set it up for this game with family sharing. Or I guess with just my whole library, including this game. So this is going to be a fresh profile guide slash tutorial series. And as you can see there, this is version 1.22. I don't know if this game's going to get any more content updates. There have been a lot already, so like... It, it's fair enough if they're focusing on other stuff now. But anyways, uh, I figured I'd make this little guide series because everything else I found on guides for this game are kind of outdated. So we're just going to start here in the Lenovo Museum. Welcome to the Museum of Lenovo. Here's a- oh, I should do voices. Here's a complimentary Airbirds Air First Dash Arcana for your convenience. And you can see over there, this guy, he's flexing his Xbox or PlayStation controller because he can dash in angles that I cannot. Although, if you really want to, you can, uh... First off, I'm playing on PC, so everything I say is going to be regarding PC stuff. A lot of it's probably going to be the same as... The, sa the same for console. Yeah, I, ca I can dash at these weirder angles, too. Just it's a little bit more awkward. But, uh, I prefer to leave that off and just dash in eight directions because I don't really find you ever need to dash in more than just the eight directions anyway. And if you're on controller, well, you can do stuff like this just passively. However, I suck on the controller, so I will not be playing on the controller. So here you can, uh... On display are some of the arcana that wizards use in the Chaos Trials. They are created by virtuosos who imbue their masterpieces with all those refined in Chaos. I probably don't need to go over a whole lot of this. Uh, by channeling their magical energies through these arcana wizards with some of the powerful elements depicted on these works. Yeah. So, there are, uh, well, to start off with in this game, there are five different elements, and... Looks like the devs were even polite enough to put them in a, in a circle of how they affect each other. So there is fire, there is air, also referred to commonly as wind, there is earth, there is lightning, or electricity as uh, I've heard people say, and there's water. So here's, here's the way the, uh, they're, they're a, the whole elemental deal in this game, it's kind of like a, a, a ring. Like, like a... You know how like in Pokemon there's like super effectiveness to certain types? What, like some attacks versus certain defending types? I, I'm... I should just... Uh, so there... So fire... Fire Arcana is strong against wind enemies. Wind Arcana is strong against earth enemies. Earth Arcana is strong against lightning enemies, lightning Arcana is strong against water enemies, and water Arcana is strong against fire enemies. And uh, it kind of it works the same way backwards, fire is weak against water, water is weak against lightning, and so on and so forth. And another thing to remember is that elements are also resistant to themselves, so wind, res wind enemies will resist wind spells, Fire enemies will resist fire spells and, and so on and so forth. And the calculation for this is that if something is strong against it, something else, like fire strong against wind, fire spells will do 20% more damage to wind enemies. And then if something is weak against something else, like wind is weak to fire, that means wind spells will do 10% less damage to fire enemies. And if something is resistant to itself, like if you try hitting an earth enemy with an earth spell, they will receive 20% less damage. So now we have our... Now we have some more spells. You can, uh... Try some of them out here. I won't, I won't spend too much time with this. 
And now we learn about various signature arcanas, such as Whirling Tornado, Flame Breath, and Ball Lightning. And the way that, uh, here, we'll just have uh, Diana give us a signature here. And there are four different arcana in the game that you that you start with. There's, uh, there's your basic, your dash, your standard, and your signature, and then these other two slots, when you're playing the trials, that you'll find spells in the trials, either in a shop or, or maybe drops from bosses or enemies. And that's how you get these two spell slots. You do not ever start with these. There's no way to start with more than four spells, unfortunately. And uh, so your basic is your kind of your your all your always up spell. You can always use it. It has no cooldown. Uh, your dash. The the thing with dashes is, is that this particular dash has no cooldown, but most of the other ones do. However, you'll always be able to use the dash to move. It's just sometimes the dashes have secondary effects, such as creating like a trail of fire or a trail of earth, and that will that effect will have a cooldown. But you'll always be able to use the dash to move around and avoid attacks and stuff. The signature is uh, your any spell with a gold border. You're only allowed to have one of these at, at, per run, even if you pick up another spell with a gold border, it, it won't be a signature. And, uh, I'll go over a little bit more into the spells once we get into the actual game. And, uh, the one other thing I want to say, though, is obviously they explain a lot of this stuff here, but signatures have a blue meter that is gained from, normally from attacking enemies, but they give you these little blue balls for testing purposes. To instantly charge it and when you have a fully charged signature you unleash a much more powerful version of the spell in this case we fire off three fireballs instead of three sorry three fireballs instead of one also uh that doesn't ignite the enemies whereas these do i think yeah And here are some of the bosses you'll be facing. Here's Zeal, the Fire Council member, Atlas, the Earth Guy, and Freya, the Water Girl. And there's also a Wind Guy and a Light and some Lightning Twins who are not here because these were the only three bosses present when the game first came out. And I guess they just never updated this area, which is fine. Yeah, he's just he's just like these are bosses. And here, here are different kinds of enemies. I'll go more into each different kind of enemy later on. So, uh, oh, and these are Chaos Arcana. This is the sixth element. The, uh, Chaos, Chaos elements do neutral damage to all enemies, except for the final boss. He is resistant to Chaos, and he takes, I believe, 20% less. Just like everything else that resists itself. And uh, here you get your first opportunity to actually try to fight, and we'll see if I can do this perfectly. Now first off, we, we have we have some relics. These are your, like, your passive stat boosting things. Kind of like, uh, if, if anyone knows how I used to play Heroes of Hammerwatch and you get items from the chests, that's basically what these are. Except uh, you can only have a maximum of 12, as you can see by like the uh, the limited inventory space here. You can only hold 12, whereas here as the Hammer Watch didn't have a cap to how many items you could have. So this is some pretty basic combat, and this is another good spell that I like. And an important thing to remember with this game is that it is super hard to play it perfect. And you probably won't hit that point for a long time, and it's not really necessary to hit that point for a long time. And a uh, fun fact about this big slime enemy, he's only in the tutorial, you can never see him outside of it. I'll go more into I'll go more into combat later, but that was just to give you the general rundown of how things work. And this is how we get teleported to the actual location of where we do our fighting. So 
So this whole time we were visiting a museum, and then this legendary insignia token has sends us to the past. And uh, this is like the uh, the main little town hub, as some roguelites have. You might be familiar with Enter the Gungeons, The Breach. This is kind of basically that. So we have a mirror. Pardon me, are you all right? That looked like quite a tumble there. That, that looked like quite a tumble there. Whew, glad to see that you're okay. Welcome to your new home, away from home. As a wizard invited to participate in the Chaos Trials, your accommodations and our services are provided by the Magic Council. Also included is a one-time stipend of 100 Chaos Gems. You'll have to excuse the mess. We weren't expecting any guests so soon. But not to worry, we'll have everything sorted out shortly. In the meantime, let's do a round of introductions. So uh, you can go talk to all the various NPCs here. I'm Varys, the Enchanted Looking Glass. Just stop on by and I'll tell you how stylish you are. Uh, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Tommy, and I'll be cataloging all the arcana you come across. Let's peruse through your gallery now. So, uh, obviously there are... I don't have a whole lot right now because the game just started. We have Frostfan and Reba Rebounding Icicles. Oh boy. And we have Dragon Arc. And we have Exploding Fireball and Rebounding Icicles. You can unlock more spells, obviously, as you can see. There's a whole lot of them that we don't have. <laughs> but yeah, this is where you swap out the spells you want to use. Uh, hey, I'm Mimi, and I'll be snacking all the relics you find. But don't worry, they'll be safe and ready whenever you need them. So again, huge collection of relics. You don't start off with a whole lot of them. You, you can buy them in the town, though, with your gems. And... Uh, the only one you start off with is the, the co-op relic, friendship bracelet. It doesn't do anything on its own. See, but if both people in co if you're playing with a friend in local co-op and both people are using it, it does some it does gives you some extra damage and movement speed, I think. We have no defensive ones, and then the ticket does nothing, it's kinda just like there, because you went to the museum and you needed a museum ticket. So this is the only relic right now that actually does anything. Obviously, you can get more. Uh, hey there, my name is Cammy, and I'll be here, and I'll, and I'm here to help you remember your favorite sets of relics, Arcana. And so why don't we take a quick picture right now to remember this moment? So this is actually a pretty new addition to this game. New is in like a few months ago, and uh, you can save up to three builds that you want in the game, so you can instantly load them up. And if you have more than three, I guess just write them down in a Google Doc or something. Just, I think I have a Google Doc for that. Uh, now let's see what fashionable outfits I have ready for you. So, Ward here is how you change the robe you have selected. And different robes to give different stat boosts. Obviously, they're all locked right now. And the only two you start with don't do anything for a while. This and this will each gain their own stats. I think as you buy more of the robes, you have to buy like four or five different robes for each of these to gain stats. I'm gonna go with blue because I like the color blue. And uh, that's pretty much the rundown of the inside stuff. And uh, just a couple things to go over real quickly. Uh, how the, how buying relics and how buying arcana works. So there are a lot of relics in this game, and they're divided into five different pools. Once you buy half, of, and I think you can look up exactly these pools online on the on the game's wiki. And once you buy half of a relic pool, you'll be able to start buying from the next relic pool available. Did I say that right? Yeah. So once you buy half of pool one, pool two will start, I, I guess, I think it will start appearing in your games in your trials. Oh, by the way, uh, these guys are like, basically just like, oh, you're not allowed in. Wait, never mind. Uh, I don't, I don't want to ramble too much about this non-important stuff, but there are five pools of relics, and just buy relics, you can unlock the other pools over time. Same, same deal with Arcana. Uh, there are different pools of Arcana, five of them and once you buy half of the first pool you get access to the second one and then half of the second one you get access to the third one and so on and so forth and these golden border at arcana that are 50 gems you might be tempted because ooh signatures they're neat they're uh they're automatically i'll go over the enhancements as well in a second but 
number number one tip for new players: do not buy these. They are a complete waste of gems, and the reason for that is, is that the bosses that you will face, such as the ones we saw back in the museum, they will drop these spells until you have them all, and then even some they'll still drop them sometimes after you unlock them all, and then you'll just like get them for the run. If that makes sense. But the person we want to see the most right now is Seville, and uh, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna do this because this is this is a, a unique outfit that's not very good. And right off the bat, we have one of the best outfits for early on. We have Avarice. This increases your gold gain and your gem gain, which will both let you buy more items earlier on and gem gains so you can unlock more stuff faster. So I'm very happy we got to start with this. Uh, if you really want, I think, I know you can re-roll the, uh, if, you, if you like go back in here and then you leave, you can like re-roll the spells and relics that are available. Like see now there's different ones and uh, I actually will pick up this one because this one is very strong as well. So I'm going to go ahead and equip that. Dark Katana is a, is a very strong relic. And, uh... It, do it doesn't look like the robes re-roll, because these two were here before. But the, uh, the spells, as you can see, they're different spells now. Same deal with the relics. I'll just try one more time. Maybe we just got bad luck and it's the exact same stuff. And, uh, no, it looks like you can't reroll the robes, so... Focus on the robes first, because obviously, having stats on this is better than not having stats, at, like, would you, like what you'd have with the red and blue. These, like I said, these will gain stats, but you need to unlock some of the other robes first. I can't remember exactly which ones you need, but you can look that up on the wiki if you really want to know. And... Yeah, other than that, there's a... Oh, I need to go over enhancements. Yes, okay. So, uh, sig Signature Arcana are automatically enhanced, which means that they have a... That, which means that they have a bonus to them of some sort. So, if you just bought this fireball in the trial and it wasn't enha enhanced, um, it, w it would not have the increased blast radius. It would just be a normal fireball. So the blast radius and that would be smaller. However, it's not just signatures that can be enhanced. All of this stuff can be enhanced, and the way you enhance it is... Uh, you may notice right here, there's like a gray outline on these spells that means they're not enhanced. And then the golden one means it's a signature. If you find in... Uh, and this will probably only... Probably mostly be in Arcana shops, but I think Enhanced Arcana can drop too. If you find any spells with blue borders around them, like light blue borders, those spells are enhanced. And uh, oftentimes you can go to the Arcana shop and they'll be selling an enhanced version of something you already have, such as an enhanced basic or an enhanced dash. And uh, we have 10 gems left. I'm going to buy the Searing Rush dash because, as I've said, this dash doesn't do anything. It just... you just dash and all of them do that, whereas this dash, it creates a trail of fire, and you see that trail of fire has its own cooldown, but you can still dash to avoid stuff, and then the trail of fire will come back over time. So I think with this, we're going to start our first run, and I'm going to try to not go too quickly, because I, I want to make sure that everything is easy to understand. So we have the water area, the earth area, and the wind area. I probably won't be finishing these full runs just so uh, just so I can give give some newer players something to focus on a little bit. So I'll probably only do the first map or so of these first few runs so I can highlight some attention to some certain things. Now, rooms that lock you in require you to kill all of the enemies that are here. And uh, these guys are ice element enemies, so if you see I shoot my fire at them, 
Oh, bad example. But here, you see, if I hit them with my wind spells, there's no, like, it just the standard damage. But if you hit them with my fireball, it does less to them, because they resist the elements. And you can, you can tell that by the blue numbers. Like, this is white numbers because it's doing standard, that was blue numbers because it's doing less. And if you do additional damage to something on an elemental advantage, the numbers will be yellow and there will be like a little up arrow that's like signifying increased damage. Now a lot of these early relics are actually pretty good, like uh, Mirror Shield for example, we're going to pick that up, that's going to be really good for us. Now I'm going to try and go over different kinds of enemies. First off we have ghouls, they kind of just rush you. You can usually just combo them pretty easily. And then we have a bunch of different types of enemies. This is a rogue, but more specifically it's an ice rogue. So rogues, rogues whole deal is that they're, they're fast. They, they do these melee slashes and a lot of the elemental ones will shoot different projectiles. You'll see this guy shooting an icicle at me. And I think like the fire one shoots the fiery shuriken and stuff like that. Uh, they're not too bad. I actually think the normal rogues are a little more annoying, because they can crit you a whole lot. Now uh, we have archers, which are pretty pretty standard fare. They have a bow and an arrow. They're using the bow to shoot the arrow at you. Pretty self-explanatory. And another thing in this game it, that you'll want to take a lot of advantage of, especially if you have spells with high knockback, is insta-kills by bad example, but uh, insta-kills by knocking something into a pit. If you knock an enemy into a pit, it will instantly be KO'd. And, uh, okay, these these guys are funny, because uh, here's something funny you can do with these guys. If you stand right on the edge of the pit, these guys will just eat themselves into the pit. And I, and I got hit there, but if I would have backed up in time, it's a totally safe way of taking those guys out. Now these guys are lancers. They have a they have a little pokey attack, of, obviously, as you can see. And uh, the ice lancers do this little jumping thing every now and then, where they jump and shoot out of a wave of ice. Many single enemies you can out. Many single enemies you can kind of just combo to death. And if you see them making any sort of move that they're about to attack. Dashing out of the way is a good tactic to avoid it, like just dashing backwards or... Your dash is very important. That's what I'm trying to get at. Now these guys are summoners, they'll summon little minions to help them out, as well as attack with certain spells themselves. They're water summoners, so they're gonna shoot these little water spirits and water balls. And summoners are extra susceptible to being comboed because they don't really recover quickly enough from your attacks to unleash anything of their own back. So you can keep comboing the summoners and they'll be a lot more susceptible to it than the lancers will. Because the lan lancers and the swordsmen, who I don't think we've actually seen any of you. Oh no, we saw the ice swordsmen, I guess. Uh... They're less susceptible to being comboed because that, that's just how they are, I guess, because like their armor and, and whatnot. Now this is a Macho Ghoul. You may notice that this guy resists all forms of knockback, so you will not be able to get him to go into a pit at all. And uh, here we have our first elemental hazards on the map. And elemental hazards can hurt enemies, as you just saw there. So be careful to not let them hit you. And here we go, we have our... This is what I was talking about. We have a light blue border on Wind Slash. And if you take a look at Wind Slash in the corner, it will become enhanced. Which means that our final slash creates a piercing wind that negates projectiles. And this piercing wind is actually a 4 hit too, which I really wish they would tell you. But... Certain things like this you just learn with time and experience. And now this is our mini boss fight. And the way that this works is, uh, you'll see on the mini map here, there are three skulls. 
that are highlighted, that, like, highlights how many enemies are left in the board. And because I killed most of them, we only have, like, half of the skull left. If you run down the skull meter to less than three skulls, this will go down to two. If you run it down to less than two, this will go down to one. And if you run it all the way down, there will be no skulls on this thing at all. And this is important if you're trying to make the mini boss fights a little bit easier for yourself because the number of skulls on the tombstone indicates how many extra minions the mini boss will summon. So if we start our mini boss fight right now, you'll see the three extra enemies were spawned. Whereas I think if there's I think if there's nothing left, it spawns two, I'm pretty sure. I'm not exactly sure about the specific numbers, but more and oh, there we go, we see we we built up our signature charge by hitting. And, okay, another thing to go over with, with mini bosses and bosses. You might see he's glowing yellow right now. If you try to hit him when he's not glowing yellow, you'll stun him. But if you try to hit him when he is glowing yellow, you won't. So you want to basically dodge and counter appropriately to gain a lot of stun time and ability to combo him for a little while. And, uh, lightning damage we don't have any of. Now these are Ice Archers, they'll, uh, they'll shoot a barrage of arrows, then they'll be vulnerable for a little while. One common thing you'll see with a lot of these enemies is that they're vulnerable to be struck right after they're finished attacking, so that's probably the best time to go in for the, for the kill. And, uh, like, see these guys? They're vulnerable for quite a while right after landing. This is how you can fight them normally if you don't have any pits around to cheese them. And they hit really hard, so, like, you decide to 50 there, that, so don't get hit by these guys. They, they do a lot of damage. And, uh, the, the red... I should go over all the portals real quick. I'll also pick up this, uh, mirror shield. So the green portal is the relic shop where the, uh, this dude will sell five different relics. And right now he's only gonna sell them from the first pool because I don't have access to the second pool yet. And he also sells the potion for 100. And the way the potion works is it heals you for 40% of your max health. So for me right now, this would be 200 because 40% of 500 is 200. And then it decreases in effectiveness each time. It decreases in effectiveness by 5% uh, each time. So the second time you buy a potion, it'll only heal you for 35% and then 30% uh, and so on. And I think it... I think the lowest it can go is, I think it stops at maybe 20%, I don't know about that, that might be wrong, but it doesn't, it doesn't go all the way down to zero. The, uh, the blue portal is basically just a quick way for you to get back to where you spawned, enough said about that. The purple portal, as you saw, obviously, is the Arcana store. Where you can buy new spells and enhance your existing ones, like the Wind Slash. And the red portal will take you to... This is like the mystery portal. It can be a, uh, a couple different things. So in this case, we got Cremire the Collector. And uh, as he says, he'll buy your relics. So what I'm going to do, actually, is because we don't have any lightning spells right now, this relic doesn't mean anything to us. So if you drop it, he'll, he'll uh, gobble it up, yum yum, and he'll pay you some money for it. And the amount he pays you, I think, is 40% of whatever you could buy it for at the, uh, the green item store here. The green relic shop portal. So that can be helpful if you have a bunch of relics that don't really work with your build. Have, these two really work well with the build I have, so I'm going to leave them here. And that is the end of the first floor.
you see right there, the mirror shield just blocked a hit. And then there goes the uh, little summoner. And this thing comes back after like 30 seconds or something. I don't know the exact time. And uh, I will take increased fire. Oh, no, I won't. I can't read. Now here, now here's an instance where you can probably combo enemies for quite a while. This is this is how you how you ideally want to be playing this game in the long run. Is you want to be combo locking at large groups of enemies, particularly these ghoul guys because they're nasty. Uh, and if you combo lock the enemies, they won't be able to do anything to hurt you. And. You'll notice that the, like I said before, the summoners are extra susceptible to being combo locked. And the, uh, oh here, we didn't get a chance to go over the normal summoners yet. Uh, so, in the, I, I should explain that something else. Uh, you'll see that there are three different areas, obviously. Ow. There are three different areas. There's the water, the earth, and the wind. And these will be randomized each time you play. But in the first area, enemies have really basic attacks, so this summoner dude will only spawn these little chaos spear ball things. But later on, he'll start to summon other enemies, such as... There's this one that like shoots projectiles out like he does, and then there's another one where... it It's like a little... His little buzzsaw thing is orbiting it, which is kind of annoying if you're dealing... If you have a lot of close range spells. This is why I don't want to go too quickly, because I get that if I go too quickly it could be overwhelming. So I'm just going to go over the first... They're called tiers, like 1, 2. And then if we get to the earth it'll be like 2, 1, 2, 2, and 2, 3. I'll stop this run after the end of the first tier, so that way I can go over more of the points I want to make. And because, uh... Like, I could probably beat the game with these spells, but I know that that's not really something to expect right off the bat if you're still figuring this game out. So I don't I don't want to rush anyone. I want to I want to give a nice slow explanation of all the points I'm, I want to make. Now this is another thing that the uh, random the random red portal can be. It's uh it's Nocturne the Cardist and his his deal is that uh He'll take one of your Arcana. He, he won't take your signature, your basic, or your dash because if you your, if you lose your dash, then you can't then you can't cross pits and then you're stuck. If you lose your basic, then you lose your ability to attack all the time, and that's just kind of rude. So the developers were like, nah, let's not do that. And then the signature, obviously, you don't want to lose that. So I should lose Dragon Arc here. And He'll give you a random spell. I think sometimes it can be the same spell you just gave up. In this case, it wasn't. Uh, it can. Be, so this is a basic. This is a dash. So sometimes he won't. He won't always give you back a standard spell. He'll sometimes give a basic or a dash. But the incentive to use him is you'll notice that all of these spells are enhanced, whereas the dragon arc I had was not. However, if you if you're really not comfortable with with just sacrificing spells that you like, do not use this guy. I rarely use him myself. I was kind of just using him to show what he does. I'll use Lace Lightning because this spell's pretty cool. It creates a little lightning field here. And as said, it is enhanced, so it summons a larger ring with additional pins to lace together. And, and of course, you can you can read what enhancements do beforehand. Like, like for the dash, for example, it you, it adds an explosion on landing that burns foes. So you can look at that and be like, mm, I don't really need that. You can kind of plan ahead that way. I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought that was gonna be Dragon Arc because I was used to having it. Oh, and uh, in case I didn't go over that before, the little health balls. I might have went over this already, but the little health balls heal you for 25. And they can heal you for more if you have items that increase healing. There aren't many sources of increased healing, but I think there's like one or two. And as you see, if we combo lock enemies or stun lock them, 
they, in particularly in these early levels, they will be completely incapacitated and unable to hurt you. Uh... I, I think I should get another spell here, just because I want to try and go over as many spells as I can. So this is Scales of Babylon. You drop a little thing on the ground, and uh, it damages enemies, and it slows them and speeds you up. So, like, you're stealing their move speed. So that can be really good for uh, enemies that are really fast, or if you're feeling particularly slow. And these golem guys are another enemy that cannot be knocked back, as you can see right there. And they're the tankiest enemy in the game, and also one of the heavy hitting guys, the little punch attack he has does 50, so be sure to avoid that at all costs, because it's he's really slow when it comes to his attack speed, but he hits really hard. And this is another mini boss, this is the Grand Summoner, his whole shtick is that uh, he's going to summon a lot of these little chaos spear things. And this is one of the only mini-bosses where I would recommend attacking him even through, like, the even if he's glowing yellow. Because, as you'll see, he doesn't really particularly threaten you most of the time. Just when his spear guys tra dash in towards you, be sure to dash out so they don't hit you. And... yeah. I feel like I should go over more in depth of, of these guys, but I'm kind of just going to be making points as they come up. And obviously, uh, for certain enemies such as this archer, you'll see his line of fire before he attacks. So be sure to take advantage of any any enemies that are polite enough to tell you where they're going to be attacking before they do so. And Pharynx's Hourglass. When you take damage at low health, it briefly removes cooldowns and all your arcana, so... Low health is when you're flashing red up, up at the top here. I think it's if you're below... I want to say either 25% or 20%, something around there. <laughs> Maybe 30, I don't know exactly. But when it'll make a little ding sound. Like, not repeatedly, like how some games have an annoying alarm sound. But it'll make a little ding once, and then you'll just be flashing red up here, which is really nice because a lot of games have really annoying low health beats. And th this this game, they uh, made sure to minimize the effects of that. Now we're gonna fight our first boss, and before every boss, you have a health crystal here, which will give you three health balls of 25 each, so that'll fully heal me up. And this will always be before every boss, so make sure to keep that in mind if you're planning around your your HP. That keep in mind before every boss, you'll get healed by 75. With that being said, we're going to go fight Freya, the first boss. And in my opinion, the easiest boss to get first. Uh, it's too late to be getting cold feet because I'm about to freeze you in your tracks. All these bosses love puns, by the way. So if you have a projectile, it's often good to fire it off the boss right away. And I'll just be dodging her stuff for a while to try and highlight what her attacks are. So, she has little water blasts, she has a little ice sword that hits you for a lot. And you'll see now that we uh, we can stun her for a bit. She has these icicle spears, these little water balls. And you'll notice that she attacks three times. That's another one. This one's really, really annoying. And now that we've, now that we've been fighting her for a certain amount of time, she's using her signature, which is basically her version of our fireball. And you'll notice. Uh, I'll try to like, I'll try to do the counting to show it, but. That was one, the sword, two, 
and then three, and then she's vulnerable. So every one of these bosses in the first tier, in the first part of the game, is vulnerable for three hits. Or, or attacks for three hits before they're vulnerable. Not bad, you certainly know how to stay cool. Ta-ta for now and stay frosty. And uh, in the later tiers, like in tier 2, they do 4 attacks, and then in tier 5, they do... Or tier 3, they do 5. And we get a golden chest, which gives us a lot of gems and some health. And, ooh, this is a really good one. So, we've unlocked S Shattering Strike, not only for this run, but also for the rest of the game. And with that, I'm going to go back to the town, because... Again, like I said, I don't want to progress through this game too quickly. I want to try to highlight different things and all of the like the different tiers. All the like how do I say it? I want to highlight all of the bosses in all of the different tiers. I don't want to just run through the game too quickly and leave people confused. So, now now we'll have um Shattering Strike available in our signature slot. And this is a really strong attack because if you use it at close range, here I'll use it against a single target. If you use it at close range, I messed up a little bit there. If you use it at close range, it hits for a crap ton. Let's see there, I hit 25 and then 96. So that was a lot of damage. So this one is really a really good spell for bosses, particularly. The signature form, it'll do it three times. And now you'll see... Yeah, 287 damage. I wonder if... I don't know if I can line it up better than that, but... I think that was a little better. 281, yeah, but... 280 for a signature is quite a lot. There are some signatures that don't do that much. This is one of the higher-ended ones for single targets. And... Oh, I thought you unlocked the standard form of the Archon as well. Because every signature Arcana... Oh, it, it's important to know, every signature Arcana also has a standard form. Like, here's the standard Fireball. That's not the Fireball. There's the standard Fireball. And you'll, you'll, you saw there that uh, it was definitely smaller than the other one. So every signature arcana has a standard one as well, but not every standard has a signature, because some of them it just wouldn't work. So now I'm going to try and use some different spells to, to I'm going to try and highlight as many spells as I can. We're going to swap to Frostfane, and we're going to swap to Shattering Strike, and I'll see if there's any other basics or dashes I can get. Or maybe relics or something. Uh, no, there's no more here. Hmm. We can use the Equestra Cap, and I'll get Gloves of Gambit as well. So. We'll use a quester cap for right now, and I just want to remove the exclamation point on this. So, a quester cap, in addition to looking like a super dank horseman, you run to speed, you run to your max speed much faster. Like, you know how if you walk for a while, you start running. If you do it with the horse head, you will start running much, much, much sooner. Like, way sooner. And I think you also run a little faster, too. Like, a plus 8% speed... I don't know if it's plus 8% move speed in general, or just when you're running. But yeah, it's, it's a good mobility item. So we'll definitely give it a try here. And I guess I'll buy a couple more of these spells. For uh, later use. And for now, we'll just go back into the trials, and now we're going to be fighting Shu first. Okay, so Shu is recognized by most players as the hardest of the five bosses. I certainly think he's the hardest of the five bosses, and the reason for that is his signature attack, which I'll show off when we get to him. 
And th these are little explosive barrels. I don't know if we had any before, but uh, be careful of those because they deal 25 damage and will stun anything they hit for a while. And you can see I combo locked him there. They'll deal 25 damage and stun anything they hit for a while, including you. So do not, do not hit them at too close of a range. It's better to use something like Frost Fan that has some range to it to take them out. But you can also use them to uh, deal some extra damage to enemies. And uh, we'll dash over here, get the freezing sprite. So this thing, it just pretty much just freezes stuff passively every once in a while. Not great, but it helps a little bit. It also does a little bit of damage. Now you see you don't want to you don't want to let the uh, spear guys get the leg up on you. So I don't know how much of how much of this is really going to be a tutorial and more of it's just going to be me playing from a new file. But the idea is that uh, th this is supposed to be like a new series for people getting into this game. Ow. Don't do that, that's bad. Oh my god, I suck. And uh, I hope I'm going over some good points, and if anyone in uh, the Twitch chat watching, because, I don't know, it looks like there's a few people here. If anyone in the Twitch chat watching has any questions, I'd be happy to offer my, my opinion on it or certain spells that you'd like me to try out. Uh, I will be, I am doing this to try to te primarily teach newer players, but it's also kind of just to relive the joys of playing this game from scratch again and unlocking everything. I might do like a fresh profile unlock all the stuff speed run at some point, although that would take a long time, so I don't know how how that would go. But I, it's something I've thought about for a little while, doing a, uh, like you may know I, a little while ago I did the Heroes of Hammer Watch fresh start speed run. This would be a similar thing, except instead of beating the game, because that obviously doesn't take that long. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of super short speed runs like that. Instead of that, we'll be trying to unlock all the stuff. So it'll be a pretty lengthy speed, speed run. And I think I'll also ban, like, Cursed Relics and maybe Boss Rush, just so that way there's some substance to it. I don't know about banning Boss Rush, but, like, I, d I just don't want to do just the boss fights for, like, several hours to unlock everything. Because if, if I allowed Boss Rush, it would definitely be the faster way to go, I think. Ow. Wind slash up again. Oh, and also, if anyone has any any like suggestions on the format of how I'm doing this, like I'm kind of just uh, I'm trying to not go too fast. If this, if anyone thinks there's a better way I could be doing that, please let me know. But mostly, as long as I'm getting my points across and I'm not going too fast, and it's understandable. I'd say I, I'd say I'm getting done what I want to be doing. 
So uh, we'll try out some of, some of the other spells here. Oh, this one's fun. Cascading Blitz. I like this one. So uh, it's like a it's like a water punching thing, water punch combo. At some point, I also might make, like, Arcana tier lists. But I, I feel like there's a lot of the spells I'm not familiar enough with yet to make an accurate tier list representation of them. But at some point, I, I think I could. Okay, uh, this is another one of the random, the random uh, NPCs. This is Nox, the unfortunate, and uh, he gives you cursed items for free, which is pretty cool. And uh, the the deal with the, the the whole shtick with the cursed items, though, is that they pretty much all have some sort of positive and negative to them, such as this. It's like all damage dealt up. But, it, but your movement speed is down and enemies can no longer be knocked back, so you can't take advantage of the pits to knock enemies in anymore. Although sometimes having no knockback helps certain spell combos work really well, so that that's not always a bad thing. And then, uh, double trouble is like deal double damage and receive double damage. Signature charge rate and decay are increased dramatically, so your bar will fill and drop much faster, and your signature damage is also reduced. And you'll also see Shell of the Perfect Time Crystal, so if you get the other item in the Perfect Time Crystal set, it's it's a little bit like the sets in here as a Hammer Watch, but not quite. Uh, if you get all the items from a set, they will combine into the one item, in this case the Perfect Time Crystal. And uh, it will, it usually, it will, it'll, it'll always just like combine all the relics effects into one relic so it like frees up space. Like for example, Volatile Gemstone plus the other one of this have their own different effects. Those effects will be combined into one relic and oftentimes you'll get another bonus. Or uh, lo like lose the negatives of some of these. I shouldn't go too in depth with this specific example because it's probably going to be confusing. I'll just grab Double Trouble for now and uh, just keep going on my merry way. So you'll see, you'll see already that we're doing much more damage. Which is great if you're able to avoid damage well enough yourself. Oh, here we go, we have an upgrade to Frostman, so the daggers will now go further and will pierce targets, which is really, really good. That's why I like having Frostman so much as a signature, because you get the auto enhancement on it. Uh, I don't really feel the need to pick up any of these items that bad.
Oh, and you'll see there, I took a lot more damage. So that's not great. Uh, oh, I want to go over this spell because this spell is really fun. Okay, so Fueled Berserk lets you use your basic incredibly quickly and just mow shit down as you just saw there. And here's another cursed item. Mercenary's Dagger. It uses gold to increase your spell damage, and having insufficient gold causes your spells to do less damage. So, your basic... You see my gold's not going down? Your basic is not affected by this, and your dash is not affected by this, and, uh... No, okay. This one doesn't do... This one is just a buff. It doesn't do any damage, but I guess it does when enhanced. So yeah, th this doesn't... This item does not affect your basic for your dash, but it will affect everything else, and uh, it's two gold per cast of everything, and if you don't have the gold to pay, I think you deal 25% less damage, that might be how it works. Not exactly sure, I haven't used this item a lot myself, but now we'll go and fight Shu, and as always, we get the 75 HP. And the same deal with Sh the Shu has the same deal as with Freya. He'll do three attacks before becoming vulnerable. It would be a shame for you to choke to come this far and choke under pressure. Throw caution to the wind and give me your all. All right, sounds good. Boop. So he's already taken a lot of damage because I got that cheap shot off on him. Ow. He, he also hit me a lot there. And now here's his signature. This is what makes him hard. It's a little easier to handle in tier 1, but it's a pretty uh, difficult attack overall. But yeah, basically aggression is the name of the game in, with, with Wizard of Legend. You wanna, you wanna deal a lot of damage to things whenever possible in order to completely annihilate them before they can hurt you, because enemies that don't exist can't hurt you. And here's another uh, signature we have unlocked now. It won't be a signature in this run, of course, but... Uh, Magnetic Breakers. This one's not actually that great. It kind of... It sucks just a little. It, it, it's okay for area damage and, like, pushing stuff off... off of uh, pits and stuff, but it's not too great. It's a signature. Here, I'll show you. Because, uh, we'll have it now. So, like, against a single target, for example, it's not gonna do a whole ton. I mean, like, I guess that's not bad. It does a, it does a lot for, like, an area spell. But you'll see the signature doesn't really... Oh wow, it really didn't do anything there. Hey, let me see if I can get it to work a little better. There, yeah. It, it doesn't do a whole ton. Like, Shattering Strike was doing, like, double that. So you don't want, you don't want signatures that, like, move too far. Another one that's really bad for this and is, like, maybe iconically the worst signature is Rebounding Icicles. So you'll see, for like, dealing with groups, it's not bad. It's not fantastic. Like, it, it did do pretty good damage, but... 
Uh, any enemy that resists knockback will uh, will not suffer like anything from this. I don't know if I can uh, highlight that outside. Does this boss thing resist knockback? Yes, it does. Okay. So, hang on. Let me just move these aside. And uh, you'll see... While it does while it does good damage to these things because they're able to be knocked back, there are quite a lot of enemies, mainly the bosses, mini bosses, and those two I mentioned before, the macho ghouls and the the box jumper dudes. They they are completely resist knockback innately, and this will only hit them a little bit. You'll see this will do like yeah 25, and then as a signature, it's not much better. It hit it hits a little harder, but 98 for a signature on a boss is not good at all. So rebounding icicles is not very strong at all. Uh, that being said, I do want to try and highlight as many different spells as early as possible. So we'll use uh, Cardus Prime here because it's new. And we'll use Magnetic Breakers because we just got it. And I'll purchase another one of the cloaks. Uh, I'm trying to think of what one I want. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to get them all anyway. Uh, I'll get... I'll get Vigor. And we'll, uh, we'll use that for this run. So Vigor increases your max health by 10%, so it's now 550 instead of 500, and it reduces your cooldown by 8%, so you'll see, try to watch the number here, it's, did it say 6.8? I shouldn't have blocked it. It's like 7, six, 7 seconds, whereas if we like use this, now you'll see it's 7.5 seconds. So it reduces the cooldown by a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. We'll just, uh... Are there any other relics I could try out? Not really, huh? Okay, well, we'll just stick with the horse head. Because it's stylish. And, uh, we just did shoe. So I'll 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 reset so we can get an, an, another area because I want to try to go over all five different bosses this before this stream is over. I uh, I need to be done in an hour and a half so I can go to class, an online class. So you can like re reset the. Uh, I should go over some of the plaza NPCs too. This guy. This is for when you're a little more experienced. If you give him 10 gems, he'll give you a randomized build, meaning four random spells, a random cloak, and a random starting item. I don't know if he excludes anything. I'm honestly not sure. I Like, I don't know, like, you know how the museum ticket does nothing, right? Like, it does nothing. I don't know if he'll, like, exclude that from, from it because it does nothing. But, uh, so Jade here, she's rich, she's, she's a, a tiara, and she, uh, seems I'll have to look elsewhere. Um, yeah, so Jade's whole deal is if you give her 20 gems, which we do not have, she'll give you 200 extra gold to start your runoff with, which can be really helpful for buying an extra item or two early on. And I think there's two other, two other things here. Yeah, ma Malind. Malind? It's probably Malind. There's Melinda and Malind. Uh, so if you give him... Oh, he, yeah, he isn't... We don't have enough for him either. If you give him 10 gems, he'll let you start off in... a specific in elemental area. Like, you can fight Shu first if you want to get him out of the way so you want to face him later. Or you can fight... Uh, who else do we fight? You can fight fight Freya first if you want to have an easier time and help build up your power. Or just if there's specific bosses you want to practice first, that might be a good thing to try. But generally I don't use him very much. I I would save your gems for buying upgrades to your 
well not upgrades, but buying new spells, buying new cloaks, buying new relics, and if you give her 10 gems, she'll let you play on hard mode, and uh, I guess I'll start another run here. That, that's pretty much it for the NPCs for now. Uh, we already had Freya. And the way hard mode works is, uh, like I said, in the in the third, second and third tiers, enemies will become stronger. I, I think their stats actually go up, and additionally they have different attacks that they'll throw into the mix, which will be harder to avoid than their standard ones. And... Playing on hard mode basically makes the game tier 3, tier 3 difficulty, the entire way through. So the enemies will do all their, their fancy stuff right off the bat. All of the bosses will do 5 attacks before being able to be stunned, and I think their stun windows will be smaller as well. So it's definitely worth a look if you've beaten the game a few times and you're looking to increase the difficulty for yourself. It's definitely not impossible, but... It is a step up if you're still learning this game. Or honestly, sometimes even if you're not learning the game, it's still a step up. So now you'll see another problem with uh, Magnetic Breakers. It, uh, you probably noticed it against the Macha Ghoul there. It, it doesn't knock him back, so it does not do a whole lot. Like, it's not bad for like an area... To, like, see there, it was actually okay. But against anything that resists knockback, it is not terribly good. But it is a pr it is an okay spell for like area damage. And uh Certain, certain other spells excel against targets that are just knocked back, like, uh, you'll see this, uh, oh, wrong button, shouldn't have done that, but, uh, you'll see against this golem here, he's not knocked back by Cardus Prime, so you're able to deal a lot of extra hits on it, with it on him, because he's not knocked back. Whereas enemies such as that rogue that I accidentally murdered. Here, I'll just use it, uh, I'll just use it here. You'll see these guys will be knocked back a little bit, so you can't really, uh... You can't really as easily hit them with every- with, with all of it. Like, you still can, it's just they get bumped around, so it can be a little bit harder to aim. Or to- or to control, rather. And here you'll see uh, one of the strengths of Magnetic Breakers is that it is very good for knocking enemies off pits. But overall, it itself does not do a terribly large amount of damage. And, uh, I will pick up Wind Slash again. So, you probably notice I like to enhance the basic. Enhancing the basic, like, when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, okay. When it comes to getting Arcana in the runs, you usually don't have to buy more than once, like, new spell out of here. Like, unless if there's one you really want, for example. Or, uh... Like like this one I, I like a whole lot, so I might I might buy it, show it off. But usually you wanna enhance the stuff you already have, like the basic the dash isn't as important, but enhancing some of the dashes helps a little. And your uh your standard. Like uh Cardis Prime will create extra ice blades and they'll all shoot outwards once the spell is finished. Uh, 
I don't know why I did that. That was really stupid. And yeah, a lot of these rooms you'll see repeat throughout the throughout the game. There's not actually a a terribly high amount of unique rooms. So you'll probably start to recognize the room layouts and you'll be able to deal with them better. Who do we got? Crush Colossus. Okay, so this guy this guy is basically like a like a super like a super one of those guys with a block. Like a, an extra beefy block guy. And here we'll, uh, well here I'll just kill his minion first. And now we'll use our signature on him and you'll see it won't do a whole ton. It, 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 it didn't knock his health down by a whole lot. Whereas, you may remember Stone Strike just completely annihilated the uh, mini bosses we faced. And uh, earth damage up. Don't really need that, but that's okay. Uh, this is alright. So now, we, uh, there we go, that. We have a chance to fire off some fiery dragons. It's not really triggering very often, but uh, we have a chance to, probably I want to say like a 10% chance to fire off some fiery dragons whenever we use our basic attack. Which can be which can be uh, a little bit of nice extra damage for your your basic. Oh, okay, and here, here is another, uh, I, I honestly kind of forgot this guy was here. So, this is Doki the Banker, and, uh, he, he's gonna make you a deal for all of your gold, for all of, all of his gems. Don't worry, this guy will not ever scam you. He, he does have a, a constant rate to his trades, so I have 91 gold. I don't know the exact rate, but, uh, 91 gold... Now, I got nine gems, so I'm assuming the rate is like ten gold for one gem or something. Something around there. So yeah, he will not ever uh, take advantage of your kindness. He will always pay his money. Or pay his gems for your money. And and uh, there's, there's an item that like... It, it's... It makes him appear, like, you can guarantee that he appears. And I think it also increases his, uh, his exchange rate, so that way you get more gems out of him. Okay, well, we'll fight this early. And now you see with three skulls, he spawns a lot more enemies. Oh man, I didn't even go over this guy. Crash Knight. Uh, he's he's the uh the big the big swordsman of the bunch. He does this rush attack. He'll also slash you at close range. And at tier one, that's about all he does. He's he's pretty easy. Man, I just fucking went on autopilot there. Uh, this this will reduce gold costs for all Arcana. Including enhancements to stuff you already have. Uh, 
Hello, ca uh, Casariendo Lolis. Thank you for checking out the stream. Ooh, what do we got? Okay, alright. Um, so... I'm gonna I'm gonna go over these items a little. Some of them are really good, and one of them is really terrible. So, crit chance increase for you and all enemies. Crit chance is really hard to come by in this game, so this item is definitely really good. Uh, this one is more like a fun item. It replaces all non-cursed relics with a random one. I don't particularly want to do that right now. Uh, this is actually my favorite cursed item in terms of like how strong it is. Uh, Increases damage and cooldowns for each enemy defeated. The negative here is obviously increasing cooldowns is bad because it means your spells are off are on cooldown for longer. But your basic is unaffected by this. So if you're focusing on your basic, this is a great item. And honestly, it's just a great item in general. The damage boost goes up a lot. It can go up to plus 50%. And the cool the whereas the cooldown reduction is uh, only plus 25 percent so I think this is a fantastic curse item this piece of garbage however stealthy Halidy. now I'm gonna read this and I want I want all you viewers to try and figure out why this thing sucks attacks against enemies at full health to deal extra damage you take increased damage we'll pick it up it's plus 35 percent now why does this thing suck well Attacks at enemies at full against enemies at full health deal more. You know what? When an enemy is not at full health, after you hit them literally once with anything, you know what the negative is? You take 35% more damage all the time. Not just again. Like I've I've thought suggested a change for this item where it's only like the first time an enemy hits you. It, no, 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 Casarian, it's even worse than that. It's not based on if you're at full health, it's based on if the enemy is at full health. So, uh, here, we'll just try and, uh, highlight it here. You'll see, uh, that first hit, 10. Now that's it. That's your bonus damage. Two bonus damage. And you'll see he hit me for 34 there, instead of 25. Yeah, do not take this item. The only reason I took it is to highlight how much it sucks. Pretty please do yourself a favor and do not take this item. Like, I get what they were going for. There are certain attacks, like, uh... Or certain arcana, rather. Like, one of them is like a meteor, and it's one really big heavy hit spell. It hits for, like, 75 and they're probably like, oh, if you have heavy hitting arcana and you hit an enemy with with that in full health, it'll probably do a lot more. The problem is that even with those spells, it doesn't work that well. Because, again, you only get the bonus damage on the one hit. And 35% for one hit, in many cases, is not that much at all. Whereas all of the enemies get to deal 35% more to you all the time. But yeah, per the the even the spells that work well with it, this thing still sucks. So this this right here is probably the worst cursed item in the game. So please, if there's one thing you take away from this tutorial slash guide slash me playing and rambling like an idiot, do not pick this up under any circumstances. It is bad. Now here's Flame Member Zeal. She is, in my opinion, the second hardest council member. And you'll see I got really good use out of that Stealthy Halidy and that one attack I got off. So, uh, Zeal's shtick is that she's she's pretty fast and agile. She'll do these, this uh, fire kick. She'll shoot fireballs. She'll do her little launching herself across the screen. But similarly to Shu, the reason I find Zeal is pretty hard is because of her signature attack, which you will see in a second here, probably after I hit her a little bit more. And uh, you'll see here, 
Meteors will begin raining down, and sometimes, like, that time I got a little bit better luck. Sometimes, there's just, like, five of them, all on top of where you are. There's also the Fire Shuriken attack. That can be really hard to avoid. In many cases, for a lot of these bosses, you kind of just want to stay away from so there we go. That was Zeal. She somehow didn't hit me. That's good. We got Inferno Beam unlocked. Which is pretty good. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one. Like, it's okay. It doesn't do a whole ton. But, uh, as, as with the other runs, I'm going to end this one here. Because I, I still have two more areas I want to show off this stream. We'll see if I can get another basic. That's what I want to get first. I want to get a, an, another basic. So I'll uh, re-roll a few times. No. If I, if I can't find one after a few more re-rolls, I'll just stick with Wind Slash. I just want to highlight some of the different spells. Oh, here we go. Oh, jeez. This one's bad. I don't like this one at all. Uh, we'll also get this one, because this one's cool. And we'll pick up some more relics. Like the, uh... I guess just... Yeah, there we go. So this is good if you have a buttload of gems. Because it increases your armor based on your gems. However, this item might not work properly. And the reason for that is that, uh... The reason for that is because the the oh, the offensive counterpart to this item does not work properly, so I wouldn't be surprised if the defensive counterpart also didn't work properly. But I can test that out another time. We also have increased resistance to air-based attacks. There's one of these for every element, which is 25% less damage taken against whatever element. They're, those are all right. However, I would avoid starting with any of these because you... D yeah, I, I would avoid starting with any of these because you don't know what uh, what floors you're going to be facing. So only pick them up if it's like a later floor you have coming and it's something you're afraid of. Uh, we have Blasting Sprite Aura. This is another one of the fairies. It's similar to the other one except it slows them instead of freezing them. These aren't that strong. But uh... Yeah, I'll go back to Dark Katana because we have another melee spell. <laughs> and Kasserian is going off on me for saying that Earth Knuckles suck. Okay, I think they're bad because I find them extremely hard to combo with. If they're enhanced, I think they're okay. And you know, everyone is entitled to their own opinions on how they feel about er the Arcana, because... Everyone's going to feel the game differently. There are a lot of different spells in this game. Uh, let's see if there's any more I have to highlight. Oh yeah, I wanted to have this one. And then what did we just get here? Inferno Beam. Okay. Also, uh, this to make it go away. Oh, oops. Uh, this one. Okay. So these are what our new spells do. Obviously, you saw Inferno Beam already. This is its signature version. Which is actually pretty good against bosses. Or maybe it's not. I can't remember. <laughs> is it good? Let's see. How much is this going to do? 172. That's okay. It's not bad. It's not great either. The thing I don't like about Inferno Beam is that, uh, okay. Look at how long you have to stand still for it to go off. If you're hit at any point during all of that the entire attack is interrupted. That That's why I don't love this spell that much as a signature. Its damage is fine, but the, the fact that you can be so easily knocked out of it is why I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, what else do we got? This one. This one's actually really cool. It's pretty simple. You just throw a boomerang, it comes back. If it's enhanced, it makes a second boomerang, which is epic. And, uh, yeah, we'll go try out a run with this stuff. We still need to do the lightning area and the earth area, so I'll reset until we get those areas. And then after I'll, I finish one round of both of those, I'll probably call it the end of this stream.
because I have a class to go to, sadly. Uh, I might be able to stream more later tonight, though. Oh, here we go. Yeah, th this item, it sounds great, and it would be great, but it's broken. It, it does not give you extra damage based on your gems. It only gives you, like, 6% damage, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, be, be, be wary of this item, and maybe the defensive counterpart to it as well. I, can, I should test that out sometime so I can get a, a definitive answer for everyone of whether or not it works. Okay, so we have Atlas, which is not great considering that we have the Earth spell, so he'll be resisting it. But, uh, that's alright. So Atlas lives in, like, a little planty-based thing. And, uh, I prefer to do single punches with this Earth, with this Earth spell. You can, like, double punch. But, uh, there's, like, a long window between, like, where you're vulnerable to be hit. So I'm not a huge fan of this one. There, you see right there, I just got, a. Uh, I just got hit there because of the vulnerability window. I, I'm not a huge fan of any of the basics that are really slow. And again, everyone else, everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but as a tutorial, I'm just going over what works for me. Uh, and this is good. We can activate these before they get in our way. Did we knock off almost everyone there? Uh, oh, this is this is another one of the ran red random rooms. Taffy the pinata here. Uh, if you hit him hard enough, which I don't think I'll be able to do because I don't have enough spells. Yeah. Um, but if you get his health bar all the way down, he'll bust open. He'll give you some money and a free arcana. So uh, do with that what you will. He's pretty cool. These spells aren't super great for single target damage, so it's a little hard for me to take him down right now. Uh, I will pick up this because resistance to earth-based attacks in the earth area is a very good idea. That's the thing. You wanna, you wanna kind of like obviously your four spells that you pick at the beginning. You don't know what you're gonna be facing, but. Items such as this and your other spells you're going to pick up in the middle of a run, you want to plan around what you're facing up next. It almost sounded like a bully bullying the special ring. Oh my god. Nah, he's egging me on. He's like, hit me with your best shot. And I'm like, you know what? I will. And then he's like, ow, my face. Oh, also, uh, uh, I don't know if you were here for this part, Cassarium, but, uh, you, you can super bait these enemies. Like, if you just stand next to any pit, they'll just eat themselves into it. It's really funny. Super good exploit if you're ever facing that, that uh, or not, maybe, maybe not even exploit, but just tactic. If you're ever facing those enemies in, like, a, a really tight area with a lot of pits, you can just stand next to the pits and they'll just jump. Like, uh, oh no. I thought they might appear here. They did not. And one thing about Earth Knuckles is that if you do like taking advantage of knocking things into pits, Earth Knuckles is one of the better basics for that. It has quite a lot of knockback. And, uh, oh. What else do we have? We're still missing the Arcana Store. I need to highlight some more of the awesome spells in this game. Or maybe an enhancement to something I have. Like the Earth Knuckles. No? Okay. Uh, oh, here! Uh, this is enhanced. And uh, it's I, I like it more than Earth Knuckles. This is another basic. It's Aqua Arc. It's another one I'm not a huge fan of. But, uh, shoots little streams of water 
And because it's enhanced, they create little icy explosions. You'll see, like, right there, it explodes, it explodes, it explodes. And those explosions deal an extra hit of damage. It's not just, like, increasing the hit area of the spell. It actually is another instance of damage on a single target. So this spell's okay. Um, now here, here we have Counter Rope. Uh, and what he'll do is that, uh... He'll do these little slashes at you, obviously. And then, uh... Uh, every so often he'll he'll uh, turn invisible and create two little clones of uh, regular rogues. You don't have to worry a whole lot about these clones though. They are killed in one hit by pretty much anything. It it kind of does look like tears, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, yeah, you're right. It kind of does look like tears. Anyways, uh. Maybe now that we have this, we can be Taffy? Probably not. Oh, there we go, we got him! So there we go, there's, uh, I think it was 50 gold? Yeah, I think it's 50 gold if you be Taffy, and here is... Oh, this one's alright. It's also wind, and wind is strong against Earth, as you might remember. So it'll be good for this area. And we'll be able to beat up Atlas a little bit easier and his goonies. So this one you trap enemies in like a... It's kind of like a... What's that wrestling move? Where... Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't watch wrestling, but it like reminds me of like a wrestling move. Because I, I have some friends that were uh, into wrestling. The Where you like pick them up and you slam them down. But yeah, it reminds me of that. You, you uh, grab enemies in an area, and you just eat them down on the ground. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Is it uh, a su suplex? I think that's what it might be. A suplex? That that might be what it is. I might be totally wrong about that though. And uh, obviously, enemies that resist knockback will not be shot up into the sky. So these golem guys, these macho ghouls, will resist it. But they are still affected by most of the spell's damage, like they are still affected by the slam down part of it. Which is nice, because if not, then this spell would completely suck against them. So Kasarian, do you play Wizard of Legend 2, or uh, are you getting into the game, or are you like a more of a veteran, and you're here to judge me and what I'm saying. I, I'm just curious as to how you found me, is all. Well, here we go. There we go. Yeah, suplex, doing extra damage to those Earth guys. And, uh, ooh, that'll increase our basic damage, because we have a water basic. And all damage dealt, not bad. And extra movement speed. There's a, lot, a lot of these uh, early relics are pretty basic things. A friend as Sayu who told me about, uh... Oh! Sayu? Yeah, I think he's on the Discord. Okay, alright. Yeah, Sayu's on the Discord here. Uh, 
So here's Cremire again. We're going to sell this because we don't actually have any summon spells. I don't think that any of those are available for a while. I might be wrong about that, though. Actually, you know what? No, I am wrong about that because the Seekers count. But yeah, I don't have any summon spells on me at the moment, so I'll uh, just drop those. Yeah, the challenge the challenge runs for this game are a lot of fun. There are a few of them that are like utterly impossible, but a lot of them are really fun. And uh, we've seen Grand Summoner before, so we don't really need to go over him too much. Just beat him up, dodge his little goonies. That's about all there is to say. He's dead. And are there any other spells we can get? I mean... Earth's not really good against Earth. So I think I'd rather get some items. We will. I'll, I will be ending this run soon anyway though because again I want to go over the last boss. The uh, the Thunder Twins because we haven't faced them yet, and that that's gonna be in the that's gonna be in the final run. We're gonna do it the tier one Thunder Twins. We're gonna reset until we get that. Uh, what was good against Lightning? Earth is good against Lightning. It's uh yeah. Just like in Pokemon, ground is good against electric. <laughs> and wind is good against earth. Which is good because we have two different wind spells here. Now Atlas, he is this earth wave attack that I find kind of hard to avoid occasionally, depending on where I'm standing. He also shoots these big rocks that you can avoid just by ro running around him. He shoots out poison bombs, which can be kind of annoying. And his signature is, uh, don't, don't avoid it like that. That's, that was really bad. The drill, he'll give a, he'll give a really big, like, obvious tell that he's about to use it, and then just, like, get the heck out of his way. Man, this is not a great boss setup. This is taking me a long time to kill him. Oh, here I'll I'll just wait till he I'll just wait till he uses his signature again, so I can better exhibit how to avoid it. Because I didn't really do that before, so let's just let him use his signature again. Okay, so. What you're supposed to do is run to a corner, then run up, and then you kind of just let the rocks run around, like that, and, uh, yeah, pretty much. Is it just me, or is your dash acting like a wall? What do you mean? What do you mean, acting like a wall? If you mean the fact that it is spawning a literal wall of flames, yes, that is part of the dash. For the projectiles. Uh... I'm not sure. That might be a function of this. I know that, uh, for example, Aqua Arc is classed as a projectile, and if you shoot a projectile at other projectiles, they'll, like, cancel each other's damage out. So, uh, so you can shoot at enemy bullets sometimes to block them. And I don't know if the firewall is, like, actually counts to block that. That might be a thing. Anyways, we got Toxic Bolas, which is not a fantastic spell by any means, but it's alright. It's not very good against bosses, but against crowds, I actually think it's okay. And uh, that'll be it for this run. We'll do one more. And we're gonna fight the Thunder Twins, because we haven't faced them yet. And I'm saving up my gems so we can get another cloak. And excellent! The Thunder Twins are first. We did not have to re-roll anything. And uh, in later streams, I'll uh, I'll go over like later tiers of the game. Because right now I've only been playing Tier 1. Just to kind of give uh, everyone a bit of a breakdown on Tier 1. I do not like Earth Knuckles. Ah. 
Ouch. But yeah, like... Don't... One thing I want to say, if I haven't said it already, is do not feel bad about getting hit a lot when you're first getting started in this game. Like, shit, I have a ton of hours in this game, and have you seen how many hits I've taken? It is, it, it's not something to feel ashamed about. Sometimes you just have your off days, and uh, everyone obviously has their own uh, ways of learning things. And once I have more access to more of the spells, I will go over some uh, early game builds to help you win a little easier. And uh, Crush Colossus, we've seen this guy before. I think we haven't fought Burst Mage yet. Burst Mage is probably the uh, hardest, it's definitely the hardest mini boss for me, and I know some of my other friends who play this game will agree with that. They'll say that he is definitely the hardest. For now, this first stream is kind of just going over the basics of the game, uh, things to focus on early. Like obviously, I bought a new dash right away, uh, I said not to buy the signatures because you'll unlock them from the bosses. Uh, I, I got really lucky with getting Avarice as a cloak immediately. Uh, if you want to farm gems efficiently, Avarice is definitely the best cloak to do with that. The gem gain does not help out any chests, though, so it'll only help out gems that you get by, like, defeating enemies. So it won't help out a ton, but fortunately that also means it's not a huge loss if you don't get it right away. And uh, I will upgrade Cyclone Boomerang, and you'll see now it does shoot out too. The second one is a little harder to see there, but uh, it was there. Yeah, the pirate cloak, pretty much. Give me all your booty. Oh, can we beat Taffy? I don't know. Probably not, because Earth Knuckles are slow. But we can try. Nah. Earth Knuckles are too slow. I don't think it's a relic shop. Oh, whoops. Wasn't wasn't looking at the screen for a second. Um uh, we got Rockville's Pendulum. This is another one of those good general functionality items. Just a slight reduction to all your cooldowns. It's like it's like vigor, but in relic form and without the health boost. I won't go over the relics probably as much as the spells because I don't know. There's just not a, there's not a lot to say about some of the relics, but the cursed ones I will definitely go over in a little more detail. And if there are any good relic synergies that come to mind, I'll uh, I'll be sure to bring those up as well. There's there's a a really good 
early game synergy involving a certain cloak and a certain relic. But we don't have either of those yet, so uh, I, have, I have yet to be able to explain that in detail. And there you see there, he knocked me out of it. That's why I'm not a huge fan of Inferno Me as the signature. Because you can be super easily knocked out of it if you're not uh, in complete safety when you use it. Oh, I have to... Another thing to know with signatures is um, which ones you're able to dash out of. Like, you saw I was able to dash out of the Inferno Beam to cancel it and get myself to safety. There are some signatures, although I don't think there's a ton of them, there's only a few. There are some signatures where once you use them you are like locked in place. And you are committed to finishing them, whether or not it's a great idea. So uh, be careful of those signatures. They're not necessarily bad for that reason. You just, it's just something you gotta be mindful of. Also, Inferno Beam is another decent spell for knocking enemies off cliffs. And for doing that. Damn, you didn't even die to that. Uh, okay. Here's another, uh, one of the, uh, I think it's the last one of these that we have to go over. The no other random room. I'll come back here in a second when I can explain what it is. A little bit better. Just, uh, give me a second. I'd like to find the Arcana store. Then I'll definitely pop back over there. Is this it? Okay, this is it. Um, I'll grab, I guess, this spell. So now we'll go here. This is Doctor Song. Uh, her her shtick is that uh, she's a research scientist and she wants to take one of your Arcana to research. And uh, the Arcana selected is random, much like the Cardist. But the th I, I don't know if the I guess the Cardus would work like this too, because the whole point to him is that he enhances the Arcana. But uh, Dr. Song will pick a random Arcana that isn't your basic, your dash, or your signature, because obviously without these two you can't really play properly, and this one's just too good to give up. And she also has a preference towards unenhanced Arcana, so she'll probably take this over this, hmm. if I'm correct. Yeah. And, uh, wow. So what she does is, uh, you probably didn't see there, but she drops three health orbs, and she also gives you an item that correlates to healing. Here I got 50% increased healing from all sources, so this is actually really good for, uh, for builds that have, like, a lot of regen regeneration items in them. And all, all sources is, like, everything. Like, there's... There are items that, like, heal you when certain, like, knocking off... There's an item that's, like, heal if you knock an enemy into a pit. Heal if one of your summons kills something. Heal if you get a critical hit. Those are a few examples. This will apply to all of those. And it'll also apply to potions in the, in the uh, relic shop. And as well as, uh, ow. As well as the little health balls that you get 
at various points. Uh, here we go, crit chance. 8% more crit chance, not much else to say about that. And now you'll see uh, each of these health balls should heal me for 37. I'll try and... Uh, oh, third. It was 76 for two of them, so I guess it's 38. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this rounds up. That's right. So 25 would turn into 37 and a half, rounding up to 38. Anyways, here's the last boss of the stream. Uh, it's the Thunder Twins. This is the only boss that's a duo, so generally what happens is one of them stays in place while the other one goes around attacking. And this boss gives you a lot of... Like, this is the only boss I'd recommend trying this against. This boss gives you a lot of time to hit them when they're not, like, when they're still in their, their super armor. That's what it's called when they have the yellow outline. I wouldn't do this with any other boss except the twins because they... Because one of them's jumping around and the other one's stationary. You're able to get off a lot of free hits without stunning them. Of course, if you want to play it safely, you can just wait for the uh, all the attacks to go off like the others. For this signature, it can seem really overwhelming, but I find the best way to avoid that is to stand in a corner and just follow the path of what the twins are doing. And obviously that's bad, so don't do that. Uh, this one kind of... I haven't really gone over their attacks that much. So here, I'll, I'll let them attack a little bit more. For that one... Uh, for this one, start in one corner and work your way up to another corner. For this one, kind of just dash out of it. And this one, just don't still, can't hold still and you'll probably won't get hit. Just dash around wildly. And then, what's the other attack? They have the... Uh, well, yeah, the signature. So again, pick a corner. I like the bottom left or bottom right corners the most. And this one, this one's a little hard. You kind of gotta, you gotta kind of gotta watch their animations because, like, their animations are very slightly different, and that'll give away the attacks that they do. And that, that's the case for a lot of bosses. Like, pay very close attention to the animations they do, as that'll give some sort of tell as to what they're about to attack with. And we got Frost Fan as a signature. You remember that we used it before uh, in some of the other runs. Frost Fan as a signature I like a whole lot, because uh, here, I'll just show it off. It's really good. It's really strong. So obviously, this is a good spell for shotgunning, because a bunch of the shots can hit the same target. But as a signature, it's even better. Well, not quite, because you back up a little bit. But uh, here, let's see if I can aim it a little better. Bad example. I'll go outside. Because the... Uh, the bosses, like, this is the size of an average enemy. The bosses are a little bigger, so you can you can shotgun the bosses a little bit more. Is there, there, 225. You see, that that was good. That's what I like to see. And we'll get Fueled Berserk because Fueled Berserk is awesome. That's the, uh, you may remember, that's the one where, uh, where we can use our basic super fast. And we have enough to get one more cloak. I'm going to pick... Uh... Again, it doesn't really matter, because the cloaks don't reroll, and you're going to want them all eventually. Uh... So I'll pick Pace. Pace is the run speed and evade cloak. It gives you a lot of run speed and a small chance to evade. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. You can run really fast. You can run even faster if you equip the horse head. Now you can just zoom across the screen. And I think that'll be about it for this stream. 
Yeah, zoomy zoom. That'll be about it for this stream, because I've gone over all the different bosses, and I have a class soon in uh, 30 minutes, so I don't want to be late for that. But, uh, here, I'll buy some more relics, too. We can get the Earth one, we can get the Giant Heart, we can get the Shell. Alright, cool. Uh, and that'll be about it for this. I'm... I'm gonna keep going from this new profile. Like I said, uh, this is a new series I'm gonna do on the channel to help people starting this game out in 2020. And uh, hopefully this format was good. I'm kind of I'm gonna I'm gonna take it slow. I don't want to rush through the game too quickly. I'm gonna go over all the different spells and relics I unlock, more, more so the spells, less so the relics, because a lot of the relics are self-explanatory. And uh, thank you, I'm I'm glad you thought it was informative, and uh, we're gonna call the stream here. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and uh, I'll be back at this again soon, possibly even later tonight, depending on what uh, what my schedule is like for today. So. Uh, Take care. I'll see you later.